Hi, welcome to the Diamond Mountain channel. If you're new to me, thanks very much for clicking on this video. I'm Chris Bilton. I've been a professional jeweler for over 20 years, making high-end bespoke pieces. Uh, last year I moved to Japan, so now I'm here, got my own little setup at home, and I'm making jewelry making instructional video guides and putting them up on YouTube so other people can learn, learn to do what I do. Uh, yeah, this today is a quick one. I'm actually using like footage from a previous video uh, I'll put a link on the screen. It's from the how to make the ring I saw on Pinterest. It was a big aquamarine. I didn't like how it looked. I thought it was a bit shoddy the way they put it together. So I kind of remade it uh, how, I, how I thought it should be done. It's quite a nice ring. I like it. I'm actually doing that ring I made in that video. I've had cast into platinum. So now I'm redoing it in platinum and I'm going to finish it off with proper, proper diamonds down there. I've got stone for the center and uh, finishing it off with diamonds down the shoulder. So I'm actually properly finishing that ring. Um, I was going to say, yeah, there's a, a section of that video where I was talking about making split shoulders on a, on a shank. But the important thing is there's no solder join on the top part of the shoulder that sticks up. I really hate it when people just make a shank and then they file a little section out and then they plop a bit of metal on. It's like you're filing metal off and then adding bits on and then it's a bit, a bit bodge jobby. I know you can do it, you can get away with it, you might have to as a repair or something one day. Uh, but it, it's a little bit, bit, a bit of a liability with a solder join showing up because you can't really, unless you get that thing absolutely perfect sitting in its little position and get it really perfectly tight and get solder to flood in really well. Uh, if that's not the case, then the chances are after polishing, you're going to have a little line showing up, which is why on old sort of 90s rings you might see when you get rings in for repair, They've always got like a little saw cut going. So you've got the split shoulders and there's like a little saw cut put on purpose, sometimes two, as a kind of decoration. But what that is, that's the jeweler who made it hiding their solder join, which was obviously showing up because uh, it's difficult to do that properly without a join showing up after polishing. So ideally you have that shank with no solder join there. And in the video, I'll show you how I do it. I'm about to start milling out that center section. Now remember when you're milling your metal, it gets longer as you mill it. So that might be a thing <laughs> you need to consider. Yes, you literally just put it in there. See, I've drawn, I forgot to mention, I, I put little lines on where I want it to, um, where I want to mill out. So about that much. Depends on the size of the ring, obviously. This is quite a small size. I'm going for like KL, something like that. Um, so yeah, just clamp it down in the middle. Roll it up to my line, go to my other line, back to the middle, squeeze a little bit more, do there, mm -hmm. just keep going. Obviously stop and anneal it sometimes. Let me go a bit more of that towards that side. Oosh! There you go, just flattening it out along there. You know, actually, you don't need to flatten that much because then obviously that section and that section is going to be the shoulder, especially a big stone. It's a lot of distance across the finger, so the shank is not actually that long. Anneal your bit of metal if you're making it. Take your large half round pliers, and if you don't have these because they don't sell them, uh, you should make them, like I always say in my videos. Get a big chunky pair of pliers. I bought these from Brick Lane Market, about a pound, which was a lot. Um, yeah, and then using a grinder, just grind away. It doesn't have to be that accurate. Get rid of the teeth on that side, round that off, and then make yourself a nice handle. Just This is just shoelace glued on. It's a good tool, use it all the time. That, once you get used to using these, you can put so much power into that because the handles are longer, so you're squeezing further down, you've got a lot of power, and they're just more comfortable because they're sort of a thicker, thicker handle. These are short handle, very sharp, and you can break these. I've broken two of these, I think, in my career. They're, they're, too, they're too thin. They're too spindly and crap. I don't know why you can't buy them like this size. Anyway, make your own is cheaper and more fun. Turn that up into a wedding ring. Start with the ends. See that? Wallop. And I'll just curve that all the way around. And I'm going to turn that right up into a full circle and then solder it up. The reason is when it's soldered up, I can put it on my stick and give it a tap with the hammer. Metal hammer, not your rawhide mallet. Open the window and throw your rawhide mallet out. You never need it. Um, yeah, so then it's on the stick. I can tap it round, get it perfectly round. 
and then I'll open it up and then get it ready for the collet, which I still have not made. All right, so now I've got that, this shape, turned it up, soldered it up, annealed it all while I was soldering and just filed around the inside. If you've made something, just give it a whack on the metal block, make sure it's flat, then file the sides. What's this picture? Yeah, they're perfectly parallel all the way around, which I quite like. Um, yeah, get it flat, file it so it's parallel all the way across. Select your weapon. All right, first thing I'm gonna do going about this is get my dividers, open them up to the depth of that bottom section of the shoulder. Perhaps a little bit more, give me a bit of uh, room for error when I'm sawing. Ah, okay, that's quite a nice distance. And then top one's nice and thick as well. So not, not halfway, we're going down to the sort of bottom third really. This is not a how to saw things video, but just in case you're interested in how I'm doing it with my divided lines on there, opened it up a little bit, just pulled it open with my fingers, put it on the peg, hold it down, and then just saw along the line. So just quickly, not too carefully, got two cuts down my shank now. Um, notice this top one, very straight, that one follows the curve of the ring. So I am literally just with my little knife, gonna pick it open a little bit, both sides. And then with pliers, carefully get that one straight. The old paper disc making an appearance in the videos as usual. decided to do is push it back up to a circle and then join up the bottom part of the shoulders. So I soldered these back together, tapped it round, and now I can really be accurate and get, a, get them really perfect, get that perfectly parallel all the way across both sides, nice and flat, nice and smooth, go into a perfect point, both ends, both of these are accurate, same angle, I know I need to adjust them a little bit. Um, Again, perfectly parallel, nice and straight, nice and sharp, flat on the top of the shank, flat underneath that split shoulder. Um, this kind of stage of ring, you need to slow down and really kind of get things accurate. And you're just, just really gently touching things with your needle files, not just hacking into it with big files. So I've been filing it round. I'm gonna thin off the bottom half a bit more, um, but it's reasonably accurate for what I want or where it's got to go. Um, I need to work out how to cut that. Obviously once I split that, it's gonna open up a bit more. Um, may end up sizing it down a little bit more as well. Um, but it's, it's reasonably there and I'll leave it all filed up until I've got it cut open and then that's just sitting in position perfectly. And then before I solder it in, I'll get it all papered up perfectly. And then hopefully I can just solder it in and it will need very, very little work to get it perfect. And Look at that, nice big open shoulders, no solder joins. So that makes me happy. I hate solder joins there. Blech. 